All right, Kay, you didn't grow up in Cincinnati. No. You're from Chicago. Mm-hmm. You don't live in Cincinnati. You live in L.A. But Bengals fans think that you're one of us. Yeah. What's the origin story? How did that happen? I mean, I lived in New York for over a decade in between there <laughs> also. But uh, I saw something in this team that made a lot of sense to start rooting for them when everyone was excited about Ben Roethlisberger's last year as a Steeler. And everyone was talking up Lamar and everyone was mentioning the Bills and every other team in the AFC except for the Bengals. It just didn't make sense to me. With Joe Burrow following the injury, knowing what he was on the college level, a champion, uh, sort of, sort of a strange cat who I still haven't met and want to get to know. <laughs> the talent was there. He was bringing his wide receiver, of course, over from LSU. It made too much sense. And then all of a sudden, nobody on the national level ever spoke about the Bengals for the longest time, unless it was something that was critical. Mm-hmm. And this fan base sort of pulled me in. So I, you know, it's not that I, I was driving here. It was that I was. Uh, being magnetically pulled by this amazing <laughs> fan base that really won me over because they weren't saying we deserve it and they weren't expecting the sky to fall like Jets fans over the years. It's mostly enjoying the present moment as it was happening. And that's what I think willed them to the Super Bowl that year that I said they'd go deep into the playoffs. <laughs> Bengals fans feel like they don't get enough respect from the national media. They don't. Are they right? 100%. Look at last year, 90% of sports media picked the Bills to win. A lot of strange things happened last year between the Bills and the Bengals, but they came out on top. And, you know, I I think the Bengals last year from the inside of locker room were growing a little bit frustrated, um, but also feeling themselves, which I don't like. I'm glad that Burrowhead is over. No one's talking about it. I haven't heard the words while I've been here. I haven't seen it in the media. Uh, And it seems like a lot of the teams in the AFC are now joined against a common foe named the Jets, who are Mm. out of nowhere getting all of the hype. Of course, they're stacked and they're built to go to the Super Bowl. But I think, you know, those comments that Coach Sean Payton made uh, as the head coach of the Broncos now, that is a sentiment that I think is echoing and permeating through the AFC. What The Jets, give me a break. And I think it allows teams like the Bills, like the Bengals, like the Ravens, your division foe, to sort of get in the lab work on what needs to be work on worked on. And I'll say that just being here today and talking to the DJ readers of the world, Sam Hubbard, it's business as usual. Jamar Chase, young player, just 23. But I keep asking, what's unique about this camp after facing so much adversity after a Super Bowl loss? Nobody seems to have the thing where they're cursed or they're, we can't get there. We're not going to cash in on this. Everyone's really positive and doing their own work to be better as a whole. So anytime you post something on social media that's Bengals related, the response from the fan base is unbelievable. How would you describe that exchange you have with Bengals fans? It's just the best fan base. (laughs) I don't know how else to describe it. I think there's other fan bases that have been through it. The Vikings, my hometown uh, Bears fans are, you know, every time I post something nice about the Bengals, I get the opposite end too (laughs) from everybody in Chicago. And I'm excited for them. But there's something special about this squad. I love what Elizabeth Blackburn has done. She inspires me. So she sort of pulls me in uh, as far as my interest and my attractiveness to the organization and the culture change that she sort of um, evolutionized, I'd say, over the past several seasons to make it an even better experience for the fans. You just love to see it because it's why I love the NFL. In in the blink of a hat, you could have an NFL team go from nothing to the Super Bowl or go from being hopeless to making a 2017 AFC championship run like the Jaguars did. It can happen. It takes a lot of work behind the scenes, but I will always root for it when that happens. That was 2021 for the Bengals. 100%. Yeah, four wins the year before, Super Bowl in 2021. You were the ruler of the jungle for one of the games that year, and you dove in head <laughs> First, you're hanging out at Bengal Jim's tailgate. You're having cocktails with Bengals fans before the game. What about that experience? What do I remember, Dan? I mean, what do you remember? I mean, was it way beyond what you expected? It was as welcoming as the social media response is. I think there's a little bit of no one talked about us, but there was reasons to be talked about, which is the most frustrating thing. Wait, we have a great quarterback. Wait, we have really dynamic receiving options. We have a coach that we believe in. Zach Taylor, Coach Lou, this is the sixth best defense in total scoring last year year and nobody talks about it. It's unheralded now. 75% of that secondary has been overhauled. There's a lot of changes and there are certainly question marks, but just the 
the lack of being talked about motivates a team. I hope the Bengals stay in that mindset. And as far as this season is, again, nationally, I don't think many people are talking about what this team can do. How did you refer to Burrow as an interesting cat? Was that your expression? I know. I've never <laughs> met him. I'm just going to keep saying I've never met. I've met his family members. I've met his lovely girlfriend. I've met all sorts of people near and dear to him. His favorite wide receiver from back in college, of course. Uh, he, he's a bit of a mystery. He has the compartmentalization. Compartmentalization. I mean, I don't. I'm not good at compartmentalizing, so I can't even say the word. He's so good at keeping things separate. It is a wild thing for him to play in a Super Bowl where, you know, I'm having Sam Hubbard tell me like Jay-Z was right there and Justin Bieber was right there, but Joe is like, I don't care. Like he truly is the coolest, most interesting cat around. So when you see the footage of him hopping on one foot on day two of training camp, what went through your brain? I was on the phone with my producer, Matthew Hamilton, when we were lively going through the all of the drama of it. And we, of course, noticed he had a sleeve on his caps, we're like, why is that there? Why is that there? Should they put them out here? Why is he? Blah, blah. And it just seems to me a strange blessing in disguise. I thought when, what I was watching over and over again is him put a little weight on that foot when he was hopping onto the cart. And I right away said, okay, I like this. And then to hear things like a Jamar Chase come out and say, get your rest, to hear the confidence of this locker room, even after dealing with so much adversity and saying, we've got you. I sort of think Joe at this point, after missing a rookie season, after dealing with injuries that have kept him sidelined and at, at times that he'd want to build more chemistry with his guys out there, he's probably a really hard player to get off the field and stay off the field. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, you know, people have to protect him from coming back too early. I think those were the words that Jamar Chase was trying to, you know, to tell everybody, we've got you. You get better through the Browns, through the Ravens, through Monday Night Football with the Rams. We've got you. So Chris Collinsworth on your show yeah. picks the Bengals to win the Super Bowl. And one of the biggest reasons why was Burrow finally has a healthy training camp. He can get in all those reps that he hasn't been able to get. It was almost almost felt like a little bit of a jinx. He's a curse. It's the Chris Collinsworth <laughs> curse. He doesn't say. I will say this about Chris Collinsworth. I think when you are from the team and then you are on something like Sunday Night Football, you almost talk about the other teams a little more. To you know, I'm from Chicago, and I think that's why Bears fans think I hate them because I don't talk about them very much because I'm from there, and I you know I don't want to make it any sort of perception or appearance that I favor them or yeah. that I know them even better than other teams or whatever. So I think Chris Collins was, was a bit of a victim of that, a little bit of him trying to be objective and maybe overcorrecting that in some mm -hmm. way. But I had no idea that Bengals fans felt this way about Chris. And then he came on my show and he cursed everything. <laughs> Collinsworth, where's PFF around here? Let me drive down there. I'll it's, throw ga uh, graters, ice cream, raspberry snowballs at the office as I hop oh, out of like town. That. No, no, it sounds like it's kind of like coaching your kid in youth sports. You know, you don't want to favor your own kid. Right. It's that's similar. There's something like yeah. that going on. But I mean, Chris had a great point. If you look at the numbers and they do bear out, they're not super fun. If you're a Bengals fan to see Joe Burrow, the first four weeks, first eight weeks of the season versus the last half. He has, he has hotter left la last halves. His numbers really mm -hmm. all across the board. I wouldn't say slow starts, but certainly takes a bit of a warm up period. That could be for a ton of reasons, of course. But is it chemistry? Would it hurt for him to be out there right now? No, of course not. But it's also not the worst thing that Trevor Simeon's getting some getting some love and reps out there. And he's one of the better backups, so I think. Everybody loves Joe Burrow for obvious reasons. Chase, Higgins, Mixon, you know, they're great star players on this team. But you referenced some of the guys that you talked to while you were here for training camp. Is there a Bengal or a couple of Bengals that you think this guy deserves a lot more attention than he gets? I'm really excited about the offensive line. I think mm -hmm. maybe I think it's obviously a huge question mark, but we're seeing Jonah, who could have been more disgruntled than he was for a moment now saying, all right, I'm good. I'm fine. Orlando Brown's here, a very versatile player who feels very comfortable in the position that he's in, uh, in a veteran with championship pedigree coming into the building. And I think that offensive line should be much improved. I actually think it's the best one that Joe Burrow's played with. And so that's always the low-hanging fruit for poking at this team. You're going to hurt Joe Burrow. You're going to let him get hit and sacked. I think it should be stronger out the gates than it's been in previous years. That should help all around. Joe Mixon, I think, top five year, no question. It should be available for him to go out there and get that. And I just think that one of the things that's flying under the radar is that, you know, there's always going to be salary cap issues 
on any team, especially a championship caliber team and trying to keep everybody in the building. It's not possible, Dan. So the fact that even if the T. Higgins thing doesn't work out, even if just the fact that he is showing up, that says a lot about Joe. It says a lot about everybody in the locker room. It says a lot about Zach Taylor. And, you know, guys like Jamar Chase are watching that. The, Jamar Chase is seeing, hey, I'm going to deal with that next year. I'm going to deal with my business. And I'm seeing how mm. a guy like T sort of handles that. You had the same thing. Obviously, they paid Logan Wilson. I loved seeing T say congratulations. I'm happy for you. Fully knowing we don't know what's ahead. We don't know what the future is. So then being able to, as an organization, sort of handle what could be rapid and wide ranging disgruntlement among these players like a Jonah, it sort of gets nipped in the butt. And that is teamwork. That takes everybody. Team to beat in the AFC North. Who do you think is their biggest competition this year? Baltimore, Cleveland or Pittsburgh? Collinsworth was really selling me on Cleveland, but I don't talk about Cleveland. So I'm going to say the Ravens, <laughs> their week two opponent, because you can't deny it. They've built themselves a little super team. I think if the world wasn't enamored and solely focused on the Jets, they, the Ravens would be the mm. story of the offseason. Wow. Uh, who else? What would it be? If you took the Jets, Dan, off the table, what's the story of the NFL right now? It's not on Mahomes. They're good. They're boring. They're set. Blah. It's the Ravens. It's them bringing in Odell. Odell is always a headlining act. All mm -hmm. of a sudden, he's not only because Aaron now is in the AFC and in New York. He said in an interview on Monday that had he stayed healthy in that Super Bowl two years ago, the Rams would have won 42-17. Really? And he would have had 15 catches for 250 yards. That was his quote. See, but I didn't even see me. I didn't even <laughs> see that because they're really flying. They really are flying under the radar and they're trying to build and they've got a couple great running backs as well. I mean, Lamar has to stay healthy, but I think he's got a little something to prove. And they went through, they just had a bizarre year last year. They always have weird injuries that keep them sidelined. But there was this um, um, soullessness going on. There were just weird things mm -hmm. energetically that you were seeing on the sideline. Harbaugh and, um, you know, at halftime, that I forget which game it was, Hamilton, that they sort of were, their vibe was so off, the Ravens. I forget which game it was, but you could just tell this is not the team that you're used to. So if they can get back, I would say they're the, definitely the toughest competition. Don't sleep on the Steelers, though, either. They're Ever. never going to lose a season, and I think they're on the way up. They And they, down the stretch, won a ton of games. So if they pick up where they left off, you can't sleep on Tomlin. It's a gauntlet of a division. All right, a few wild card topics oh. for the delightful Kay Adams, Let's and get then crazy, I will let Dan. you go. <laughs> Do you have any hidden talents? Oh, man. I know Morse code. Really? <laughs> yes. Now so, that is awesome. Isn't that so weird? Yeah. My grandmother in Poland made me learn it in case the Soviets came back and took over <laughs> Poland and I was stuck in a forest somewhere. That I literally know Morse code. Yeah. That is tremendous. Yeah. I haven't exercised that ever, but if yeah. I'm ever in a bad spot, I'm surviving the zombie apocalypse. All right. So some people can do SOS, but you're you're well beyond that Correct. with Morse code. That's awesome. Who is your all time favorite athlete in any sport? Oh my god. And why? Oh my gosh, in any sport, I would say, I'm just going to go, the first name that popped in my head was Matt Forte. I think he's why mm. I fell in love with the NFL because there was so little to root for and he was so fun and electric and I was on my couch jumping up and down when he, obviously Devin Hester too, but I got yeah. more of Matt Forte and he was so involved in changing the complexion of what the whole offense looked in any game that he played. So Matt Forte, off the field, on the field, was sort of the person who got me into loving the NFL on the level that I did. The greatest former Tulane player in NFL history, Cam Sample from uh, there we go. Tulane. We'll be happy you and said And we that. got a shout out about Cam Sample. I think uh, Sam Hubbard today gave Sam him a, a really nice shout out for how he's looked at camp. So we're excited to see what Sample looks like in the NFL. He's having a very good camp. Good. All right, final one. This is tough off the top of your head. If you could meet anybody in history. <laughs> I hate these questions, Dan. Athlete, okay. entertainer statesman, woman, whatever, who would that person be? Mine is Steve Martin, by the way. Is I it love, really? I love Steve Martin. We were just talking yeah. about Steve Martin. Best. Stay tuned. You'll know why we were talking about Steve Martin, <laughs> Bengals fans, in just a couple of days. Um, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, I would say. Loved Seinfeld. I think yeah. she's brilliant. She's so understated and makes such a big impact in the community around her. And I just love her. I would love it. I'd get nervous if I met her. I've met a podcast? lot of people and I, I've definitely heard parts of it, yeah. but I think I'd get nervous to meet her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'd be a babbling idiot around Steve Martin. Yeah. It's okay. People want to meet like Taylor Swift. I've met her. She's lovely, but there yeah. was no 
freak out about yeah, it. I think the freak oh, out factor Joe Burrow. almost has to be somebody. I changed my answer. <laughs> Joe Burrow. Elaine Bennis, get out of here. Joe Burrow. <laughs> I have to meet Joe Burrow. What's it going to take, Dan? Yeah, he, he's one room away. Let's, you know, let's Joe. see if we can get him to drop Joe. off. Yeah. <laughs> we just want him to heal up. That's what I keep saying. They won't let me talk to him, but I keep saying, I'm going to let him. I'm going to let him heal up. That's my, that was my PR spin. Gotcha. Like he wants to talk to me, but I said, you need to, you need to be on ice, buddy. Get back on the training table. We are so happy to have you back in Cincinnati. <laughs> you are my wife's favorite NFL broadcaster, myself included. You're, you're way above me oh, in, damn. in her mind. I will get you your forehead signed bobblehead. You promised, promised this. As okay. Promised. And you said, I heard graders called you this morning. They reached out to me to see if I could <laughs> smuggle you in some ice cream. <laughs> Is it that hard? Why? Things. Are, I will say this. I was here for the, my ruler of the jungle game. And it, this is all business here at training camp. Right. It is all hands on deck. Everyone's super focused. And it's great to see. And it's great to see you, Dan. You too. And tell your Thanks. wife I love her and say hi. <laughs> you got it.